Today we are going look into the art of Georgia O'Keeffe, her life and paintings. What did people say about her flower paintings and who she married and why he took some risque photos? Why this 20th century American painter and pioneer was considered the mother of American modernism, so let's take a look. See you, on the other side. Sunday Painter. Please click and subscribe, hit the like button and don't forget the little bell so you will be the first when we have an inspirational idea. Georgia Tato O'Keeffe, 1887, March 1986, was an American artist. O'Keeffe was known for her paintings of enlarged flowers, New York skyscrapers, and New Mexico landscapes. O'Keeffe has been recognized as the mother of American modernism. She was born on a wheat farm in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Her parents grew up together as neighbors, her father Francis Calixtus O'Keeffe was Irish, and her mother Ida Tato was of Dutch and Hungarian heritage. Georgia, the second of seven children, was named after her Hungarian maternal grandfather George Tato. O'Keeffe developed a curiosity about the natural world and an early interest in becoming an artist, which her mother encouraged by arranging lessons with a local artist. Eventually she went to Chicago where she attended the Art Institute, studying between 1905 to 1906. She ranked at the top of her competitive class. O'Keeffe traveled to New York City in 1907 to continue her art studies. At the Art Students League where she learned realist painting techniques from William Merritt Chase, F. Luis Mora and Kenyon Cox. One of her still lives, Dead Rabbit with Copper Pot, 1908, earned her the prize of attending the League's summer school in Lake George, New York. As she experimented with her art, O'Keeffe taught art, at public schools in Amarillo, Texas, from 1912 to 1914. In 1915, while teaching at Columbia College in Columbia, South Carolina, O'Keeffe began a series of abstract charcoal drawings and was one of the first American artists to practice pure abstraction. She was introduced to the principles and philosophies of Arthur Wesley Dow during this time, who created works of art based upon personal style, design, and interpretation of subjects, rather than trying to copy or represent them. Dow taught that rather than copying nature, individuals should create art through elements of the composition, such as line, mass and color. He wanted leaders of the public to see art as a living force for all in everyday life, not as a sort of traditional ornament for the few. Dow wrote a book, Theory and Practice of Teaching Art and Constructive Art Teaching. You should look into his theories, very interesting. This caused a major change in the way she felt about and approached art, as seen in the beginning stages of her watercolors from her studies at the University of Virginia and more dramatically in the charcoal drawings that she produced in 1915 that led to total abstraction. Around this time she meets Alfred Stieglitz, an art dealer and photographer, Stieglitz would fall in love with O'Keefe and divorce his wife and would stay with her the rest of his life. Here's how the story started. O'Keefe mailed a few of her drawings to Anita Pollitzer, a friend and former classmate, who showed the work to Stieglitz, the influential art dealer. Taken by O'Keefe's work, he and O'Keefe began a correspondence and, unbeknownst to her, he exhibited ten of her drawings in 1916. She confronted him about the exhibit but allowed him to continue to show the work. In 1917, he presented her first solo show so Stieglitz talked her into moving to New York a year later. Stieglitz found a place for her to live and work. He also provided financial support for her to focus on her art. Realizing their deep connection, the artists fell in love and began an affair, Stieglitz, 24 years older than O'Keefe. Stieglitz and his wife divorced, and he and O'Keefe married in 1924. So this time there was at least one person who did not like O'Keefe. O'Keefe began creating simplified images of natural things, such as leaves, flowers, and rocks. Inspired by precisionism, she started applying this principle to her work. Precisionism took for its main themes industrialization and the modernization of the American landscape, the structures of which were depicted in precise, sharply defined geometrical forms. As an artist, Stieglitz, found in her amuse, taking over 300 photographs of her, including both portraits and nudes. As an art dealer, he championed her work and promoted her career. There are many risque photos of O'Keefe which are tamed to today's standards. Inspired by the vibrancy of the modern art movement, she began to experiment with perspective, 
painting larger scale close ups of flowers, such as black iris. By this time, she had become one of the most important and successful American artists, which was a major achievement for a female artist in the male dominated art world. In 1929, seeking solitude and an escape from a crowd that perhaps felt artistically and socially oppressive, O'Keefe traveled to New Mexico and began an inspirational love affair with the visual scenery of the state. O'Keefe found a new direction for her art when she made her first visit to northern New Mexico. The landscape, architecture and local Navajo culture inspired her, and she would return to New Mexico, which she called the far away, in the summers to paint. I will make a video of her New Mexico paintings and life. For 20 years she spent part of every year working in New Mexico, becoming increasingly interested in the forms of animal skulls and the southwest landscapes. O'Keefe split her time between New York, living with Stieglitz, and painting in New Mexico. She was particularly inspired by Ghost Ranch, north of Abiquiu, and she decided to move into a house there in 1940. Three years after Stieglitz's death, O'Keefe moved to New Mexico in 1949. Now O'Keefe spent much of her time traveling the world, finding new inspirations from the places she visited. In her later years, O'Keefe suffered from macular degeneration and began to lose her eyesight. As a result of her failing vision, she painted her last unassisted oil painting in 1972. In 1973, she hired 27-year-old John Bruce, Juan, Hamilton, a potter, as a live-in assistant and then a caretaker. Hamilton taught O'Keefe to work with Clay and helped her write her autobiography. He worked for her for 13 years. O'Keefe became increasingly frail in her late 90s. She moved to Santa Fe in 1984. O'Keefe died on March 6, 1986, at the age of 98 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Her body was cremated and her ashes were scattered, as she wished, on the land around Ghost Ranch which is depicted in several of her paintings. So what did she leave us? her legacy. Nancy and Jules Heller said, the most remarkable thing about O'Keefe was the audacity and uniqueness of her early work. At that time, even in Europe, there were few artists exploring abstraction. Even though her works may show elements of different modernist movements, such as surrealism and precisionism, her work is uniquely her own style. She remains one of the most important and innovative artists of the 20th century. If you like the art documentary please subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks for watching.